Okay, hey everyone, welcome. Uh, I'm very excited to uh, be back here for Workshop Wednesday. Um, and uh, really excited about our second workshop for Top Coder Design Month here. We are bringing in some of our design alumni and um, I will introduce everyone here in a second. I wanna get through uh, kind of our initial um, what, why we're here, what we're doing. So reminder to everyone who is joining today, uh, all of you designers who are working with the Top Coder team, uh, if, you happen, if you haven't met everyone yet or you know, don't know our faces, just a reminder, uh, myself, um, now uh, Vice President of Community at Top Coder, we have Issa, John, who is um, a UI UX project manager, Sinita, who is a UI UX project manager, Vignesh, UI UX project manager, and Anthony. So um, Isa is here out of the US, Sunita and Vignesh are out of India, and many of you may, be, may remember them as they are actually um, Top Coder members and competitors, and they now are official Top Coder employees for uh, the last uh, one to two years. And then we have Anthony out of the UK. So reminder to everyone, here, here's their faces. So when you're in challenges and you're getting feedback, feel free to reach out to them and talk to them. Um, why do we do this? So we are a global community focused on solving real world graphic design and user experience problems through this crazy process using the crowd, leveraging the crowd, this idea of community. So um, we are a challenge based process where designers submit um, their design concepts or solution for critique and feedback by us and our customers. So in this process, we promote design education. We, of course, want everyone to become better designers, open design thinking, and innovation through uh, rapid design, uh, which is typically what we call our rapid user experience challenges. It is about challenging ourselves, the design process, and the way we work together as a design community. Uh, real quick, the th areas we focus in on, um, we've mapped this to kind of the traditional model of design and through competitions we run, um, we run competitions in information architecture, user experience design, user interface design. And any of you who are interested in coding or are designers who can do front end code, HTML, React, Angular, we have front end development challenges to focus in on. Um, really marrying up the designer's vision with uh, code and making sure that things work properly. Uh, design month. Uh, this is our fourth annual design month and um, we are dedicating design month and all future design months to the memory of Diablo, GH3 Ablo, who recently passed away. Um, and ironically, we have a couple uh, alumni members here from the Philippines. So um, it is kind of uh, fitting. And of course, I think all three of our alumni are from the same area of the world. So, um, you know, Gia Diablo uh, was a friend, an amazing designer, and I'm very excited to um, continue to remember him and promote, um, you know, his generosity um, at Top Coder and in our community. Um, this year and every year forward. Um, last week, we uh, covered off on the Designer Review Board. This week, we are gonna talk to some alumni. Um, really excited about that. And next week, we are talking with a customer. And at the end of the month, we're gonna have a recap uh, of prizes and um, who is going to be winning the trip to the TCO. Uh, make sure you check out the ongoing challenges that are going on. We have Jesse's Design Month Dash. Uh, round one just finished up, so get ready for round two. We have the Bracket Challenge, which is starting today. So make sure you go out to the Top Credit website, and we have what we're calling our Seed or Placement Challenge. Uh, the goal is to just um, spend a little time on the task, and uh, I will be judging and placing everyone into the bracket. So figuring out who will be the number one seed and who will be the number 20, 64 seed. Now, if we don't have 64 people who, who submit, uh, then everyone will be, in, it will be in the tournament. The tournament is Friday. Um, it would be Friday evening, US Eastern time. So morning for many of you. And the goal is to essentially uh, run these really quick 
30 minute design challenges and fast judging. Uh, so we will have our very first design tournament uh, cha uh, champion. So bear with us as this is my first time, or I guess second time figuring this out. We did this at TCO uh, 19 um, in a more, um, with only 12 people. So this time we're doing it with 64. So it's gonna be pretty crazy, but uh, I'm really excited to, to try this out. So everyone go check it out, jump in. Um, I'm, uh, I'm spending my Friday with all of you. So looking forward to that. Uh, we also have the fun meme challenge going in honor of Diablo. So make sure to check that out. And then we have ongoing learning series challenge about grid libraries uh, with some video tutorials. Make sure to check out Thrive, which if you do not know is our learning um, area on the top credit website. So that's where we have all of our updated information and uh, educational content. Uh, everything that you do in the design month uh, it can help you earn points and put you on the design month leaderboard to win a trip to the top credit open. Remi uh, Jesse's design month dash that's happening right now. We just completed and judged uh, and reviewed everything for round one. So we should be announcing that shortly. Uh, round two starts on the 17th, so make sure that you are paying attention and uh, are knowing if you are um, moving on to the next round. Uh, I loved seeing the round one outcome, so that was a lot of fun. Looking forward to, uh, to the next steps. And then, as I mentioned, the bracket challenge. So right this minute, started at 9 a.m., going for the next 24 hours is the just the seed challenge, okay? So it's not meant to be super difficult. We're looking for one screen and you will, based on what you submit, you will then be plat placed in the bracket. So the idea is, um, you know, like a number one seed will, be, will go against the 64 seed and number two, so on and so forth, okay? Uh, winners will move on to the next round based on what we're doing on Friday. If you have any questions, jump into the challenge, ask questions. Okay, sped through that. So now to get to the get to the fun stuff. <laughs> um, I'm super excited to uh, bring in um, some. I guess we're calling our alumni. Um, I, I never really feel like anybody ever leaves Top Coder, even if it's been a decade. But uh, um, I would like to welcome back um, Christopher Rouge, uh, DJ Napier, and on a, on an XK Ronda. Um, so real quick. Hello, everyone. How are, how are you doing? Hi. Hi. Yeah. All good. <laughs> yeah. How is uh, you guys? Are you and your families doing okay with this crazy, crazy COVID time? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're pretty much quarantined here at home. So, yep, but doing good. Hope everyone's doing well. So. Doing, doing okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, so, you know, uh, it's kind of ironic that the three of you are kind of from the same area of the world. So <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, it's similar time zones. Um, uh, you know, Christopher Rouge, you know, what's, uh, I was looking through some of the history of the three of you. And um, uh, you are our, our very first uh, logo champion at Top Coder. So the very first design <laughs> challenge that we ever ran was Christopher Rouge. So. Thank you. Wow, that was ages ago. Yeah, this was before we actually had studio or design challenges. So this is when we ran a design challenge um, uh, on the Top Coder platform. And so you won that. Do you remember like, like how you got involved and how you decided to submit to that? Yeah, I actually do. Um, it was one of those things that came about very randomly. I was just looking for some competitions um, around the internet. Uh, because what happened was that when I was, um, I, I, I won a local competition, a web design competition. So after that, um, it gave me the appetite to look for more contests, just to give it a shot. I mean, in the, if there's a chance in the international scale. So, yeah, by chance, I ran into Top Coder by doing some searches, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was a, a search, a Google search. And then I found it. I found the first competition. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and it looks like you, uh, you originally started or registered at Top Coder in 2005. Uh, in 2005. Dale, mm -hmm. you were also yeah. in 2005. And, you know, you were 2006. So, Dale, like, how did you find us? 
Um, I think it was probably from through a similar kind of uh, method. Um, the going through my history, I think the first one I submitted for was the TCO 06 logo contest. Um, and I did, I don't think I was very active, um, in that first little while. I don't think, I, I think when it was 2008, 2009, I think I became a bit more heavily involved. Um, <clears throat> but I was just finishing high school in 2005 and I was kind of looking up a lot of start like tutorials and just absorbing as much design information that I could from, from the internet. And I still credit to this day that the, the stuff I learned in, you know, a, a traditional college based environment was, I, I feel like I learned more from the internet and the information that was available from just watching and learning how other people did it. Um, mm -hmm. and I have no idea how I came across it, but I did and thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Cause I noticed in this, I, I noticed this with a lot of our designers and actually a lot of our members, but you started in 2005, but you really weren't active in 2008 and 2009. Right. So it's like yeah. many, many of us register early, but then it's like come back or figure out a way, or maybe there's that, there's that thing top coder that's that help, maybe I'll give that a shot. So. And I was also like, I was just out of high school and I, I, I don't think I was even set on what I wanted to do after school or as a career. So I was still in that early stage of, you know, deciding for myself and um, that, that first or the first contest, I think gave me a little taste of that or it gave me at least answering a brief a bit better. Um, and I, I don't think I would have done very well if I had tried to, um, invest more time in it because I think I needed to go through the process of a bit more education and study and development with, right. with it all. Uh, you know, how did you end up finding Top Coder? Uh, I think I already said it before in my previous uh, interview and I found it with uh, James Marquez Quest. Uh, share a uh, link for a logo design contest and that was the first challenge that they joined but uh, unfortunately I didn't uh, win that contest uh, James uh, win that I guess first place so it was so, like so, so, so it seems like logo design challenges logo design challenges are the things that brought everyone in huh? <laughs> in some way <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so uh, for everyone out there, uh, Nino and Dale are also our TCO champions from 2008 and 2009. So Yiming was our very first TCO champion, and then Nino was our second champion, and Dale was our third champion. So very excited to have you guys back and talking about uh, you know your experiences with Top Coder. You know, I think all of us, you know, the whole real goal of of this is really to kind of know what you guys are up to now. Right. So like, uh, Chris, like, what are you doing? Like, are you still, do, still in design? Are you, you know, I, I know you're into, uh, 3d and, um, you know, some video work. So like, what, what, what are you up to right now? Yeah. Um, I think I have a lot, uh, I think I have to think top coder for a lot of things that has happened in my career because, uh, after I joined a couple of contests, I actually um, went into design. Um, I'm working as a UX designer. And I, I did that for a long time in HP. So that's HP uh, Hewlett Packard or DXC. Uh, I was working as a UX designer for around 10 years. Um, I also did some 3D work there. Uh, but after HP, I went to another company. I still did design work. So <laughs> all my career, all my life, it's mostly design work. And then um, right now I'm doing mostly freelance work, but it's still design, UX and UI design. So right. <laughs> yeah, I never but, really got out of that world. Um, yeah. But, but, but you're doing freelance and you're still doing it. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, Dale, <laughs> you. you know, Dale, how about you? I, I, yes. I know uh, you're also an avid photographer and like, you know, you, uh, you did uh, TCO, as you said, 2009, 10. T I, think, I think TCO 10 was like the Dale show because you did all of our marketing and promos for that. that I was going to say, we're probably going to touch on um, the, the sort of projects we worked on, but the ones that I think I was most successful on were the branding and the print challenges where you had that kind of tangible um, 
uh, space to design and it wasn't necessarily an interface or a, a UX challenge. And, and that's kind of been the, the, the way my career has gone is that I, I came from, so in those few years between uh, 2006 and 2009, um, I worked for an agency on the Gold Coast here and they kind of taught me a lot about the, the, the print print design and we worked with a lot of companies that would a lot of the output jobs were print based and so those were the ones where I, I felt most comfortable in and TCO 10 was pretty much brand like nearly there was a lot of contests there that I was successful in <laughs> yeah yeah the, the, the brochure back. and program ones especially just because I knew I could I can do it with my eyes closed and it's it's my world whereas I struggled a bit more with the UX ones compared to the other people that were in top coder but yeah, I'm still, I'm still still doing design and photography and the type of quite like a, it's a bit, bit of a mix of a freelance and I have a day job that I work, oh, sorry, a part-time day job that I work for a furniture company and I manage all their kind of visuals. So I shoot the product and then edit it that I need to do any marketing, graphic, EDMs, anything that's needed, work with a marketing manager on it. Um, but uh, in my other spare time, I'm starting to DJ. So even though my, in, my username is DJ Napier, that's my initials, but now I'm kind of looking to start writing my own music and performing and turn that into a bit of a career as well. So that's a bit of a side passion that's become a big focus lately, but still design awesome. overall. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, Nino, um, you know, I know that you still um, compete or, or you work with uh, Jesse on some things here and there. Um, yes. Looking at your profile, um, I'll get to this in a second, but you know, you have registered or competed or submitted on an amazing amount of challenges. So um, I just was looking at some of your web design stats. You've registered for over 587 challenges and submitted on 50% of those. And that's just web well. design. Over a hundred, over a hundred logo challenges, over uh, I think it's over 150 print challenges. So you're very pro prolific historically with us. Um, I know you've been busy, not necessarily with Top Coder. So what do you, what have you been up to? Mm, all right now, uh, I'm working as a UI UX design lead for an IT company in Manila. It's a uh, Tech One Global. Uh, it's an IT company uh, empowering organizations to digital transformation. We have office in Brunei, Sri Lanka, Singapore, Nepal, or Bangladesh. So yeah, that's uh, my uh, daytime job. But I don't think I will leave uh, Top Coder anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, when I get bored, uh, like doing two to one task for two to three months, uh, I always check the coder. So it's like my icebreaker or something to challenge myself and also to get updated with uh, some UI UX uh, design trends. You know, uh, working in office sometimes you yeah, will get bored for doing the same stuff for a year you know okay i, I gotta ask is that are you really outside or is that a video i <laughs> know <laughs> it's a, a background video okay <laughs> all of a sudden i saw the waves in there. i'm like wait a second <laughs> <laughs> i'm That's inside awesome. my room <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I love that the three of you are still designing, still exploring, you know, when we've had previous alumni discussions, uh, you know, that's what I, I find, uh, you know, encouraging and amazing about everyone who has been been successful or had some taste of Top Coder is that, you know, um, the, uh, the drive to still explore and reinvent or continue to do something new is, uh, is, um, is evident, you know, in, in the three of you, and then obviously previous alumni. Um, one of the questions I'd like to ask, and, you know, I, I you know, all, all questions, please be truthful and, you know, but you don't have to, it's not all about being positive about Top Coder, but, um, you know, 
how has top coder influenced or helped you or, or, or if it's negative in like your career paths? So anybody want to jump in first or I can call on one of you. I can start. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think the, one of the most important things I learned in top coder is that uh, the grind. Um, I remember before that I used to stay overnight for some competitions. Um, mainly because I was also alternating it between um, top coder and then my day job. But the grind is good and also accepting defeat. I think that's the largest, uh, probably the biggest thing that um, top coder has taught me. Uh, in the early stages, um, well, uh, you've shown that I won the first competition, so that gave me a lot of confidence. Um, but in later stages, I know that I had a lot of competitions where I didn't even garner a place. So, of course, that hit me um, big time. But then I, I learned how to accept feedback, um, you know, and then accept defeat at, 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 at that point and not to be let down. Because um, I, I do remember that there were times that when I didn't reach the milestone period, of course, I didn't make the milestone. I would be discouraged a lot. So, so why would I still continue, right? So, um, right. you know, um, continuing and keeping on the grind and then keeping on joining contests um, gave me that, uh, you know, uh, gave me that trait where I had to try harder. Um, there were even times that I remember where I didn't place uh, a milestone uh, position, but I won, I think, one of the competitions as first place, if I'm not mistaken. So um, hard work and then determination and grit really uh, takes you far, and I learned that from Top Coder. So did that, so like a question, if I can dig into that a little bit, so how did that maybe help you with HP or how did that help you working with actual customers outside of Top Coder? Oh yeah. So um, there were a lot of clients that really demanded things, you know, quickly. They wanted it done in a snap. So I, I think all that grinding and grit um, helped me a lot. And of course, the techniques that I developed um, during the competitions. So I, I had some techniques where I, I kept libraries, uh, design elements that I kept on reusing and then, you know, reskinning stuff like that. So yeah, and, and the determination mainly, it's, it's the characteristics that I gained where I, I couldn't really give up. I mean... Um, I, I didn't give up easily. So even if the deadline was a crunch, like like most of the contests before, if I remember correctly, <laughs> from the muscle into the final round and stuff like that. So yeah, that helped me a lot. Dale, how, how do you? Yeah, it's very 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 similar. Um, it it teaches you kind of to commit to a brief, and if you're going to do it, you need to kind of make sure that you do it well. Otherwise, you run that risk of not getting anywhere and then you've kind of wasted this time um so it's 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 it taught me how to self-analyze and go am i going to give this the the effort and energy it needs to get the reward from it and you know that you'd pa pass on some jobs or you wouldn't submit because you know that you can't do it um but that 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 learning curve you get after doing a couple of contests um it's kind of invaluable to apply that to real world jobs and indeed like communicating with clients of what's realistic, what you, whether you do the job or not. Right. Right. So, you know, how has it helped you? Like, you know, you're working for a tech company right now doing um, UX, how is kind of, and you come back and still do some competitions. Like how does that, how does that mentality help you with, with your, your day job? Yes, yeah, I think similar answer. Uh, top coder helped me a lot in doing UI uh, designs. Uh, it uh, I can work fast uh, since I get used to like uh, one to two hours deadline uh, during top coder competitions, and uh, uh, getting this current job. Uh, First, I remember applying for this uh, job, uh, showing my portfolio. I think uh, Top Coder helped me to get into this uh, company, showing some of my previous work. I imagine working with the biggest names and companies in the world. Uh, yeah, I think it's a big part of what I'm, I have may yeah may work now yeah so i like to ask this question because um and actually dale you asked me something about what, what may have changed since you last competed 
Uh, one of the things that we do a lot more of now is this rapid user experience challenge. So we do these challenges that are, are we call them a rucks. They're, it's kind of the way I've branded it in the community, but they're a, they're a 72 hour challenge. Um, and it's meant to be fast concepts, uh, but typically it's high fidelity. And of course our customers love it, but it's, it's also higher prizes. So it's normally a $2,000 first prize, se second prize, 15, third prize, a thousand, uh, upwards of five prizes. And then we have a live user experience challenge, which is normally 24 hours and at an event. So if I'm at an event, we'll run this, this challenge. But what I've seen or what I've heard or what I've asked is like, how is like just planning for that kind of speed? Like, how do you understand the brief? How do you make a decision quickly? How do you know what's the right path to go down? Um, you know, good or bad and are, are you good or bad path or, you know, the decision making process to just engage and say, okay, this is the path I'm going to go, you know, right or wrong. Right. And I think sometimes um, that also applies to how you work, you know, in, with customers and how do you have to meet their deadlines. And so that's why I, I was kind of curious to see, I'm always curious to see, of course, how um, this process has uh, helped the design, um, um, helped you as designers. So. Um, Daniela, feel free to jump in if you have any questions, but I asked Daniela to be on, be on the panel today because she did arrive um, after uh, the three of you, uh, but she's uh, had a big impact and influence on some of the things we're doing around here. And um, uh, so feel free to jump in. Yeah, actually, I, all three of you have said that you had a lot of, of things to learn from Top Coder and you're still freelancing or working for companies. And I was wondering if you plan to come back and be active again. And another thing could be like, um, what do you like most? Working on, on the company or working for Top Coder because you have so much freedom in customers, in a lot of different types of projects, competitions, uh, new things every day, rather than a company where you actually have to focus on some branding elements, some consistency or more fixed, I guess, into the limits. So I'll start by answering the second half. Um, I think everyone that is uh, submitted or is involved with Top Coder from the designer point of view I like I feel like we've all had to make kind of that the trade-off between at the access to kind of the variety on working on different projects and the potential higher payment but then the, the risk that comes with that is kind of the trade-off for what you what you work in a day job where you you show up for a certain amount of hours and you get paid the same and you but you have to focus on the one one kind of project so um I know I've definitely, and over the years, kind of um, mentally fought with, you know, which sort of path do I want to take? Um, I think as I've gotten older, um, I've chosen the more boring kind of route because um, Top Coder is wild and the hours are, can be a little bit intense. Um, but also the risk, like I, I kind of like the idea of maybe getting paid less, but having something a bit more consistent with it. Um, I've forgotten the first bit. What was this? <laughs> oh, willing, willing to come back and take a look at I some think, challenges. I think, yeah. I mean, I haven't checked in in a little while, but the concept, the concept over the years, and even outside of Top Coder, you see, there's many companies that offer this sort of crowd service. Um, so it's it's something that's not going away um, as an industry as a whole. But I think the way that Top Coder did it from when I was involved was kind of the right way of working with the client, bridging it with the designers and the projects aren't just kind of um, the churn and burn stuff where it's for you know these $5 logo sites and, and whatnot. It's kind of a little bit more valuable and invested in and um, geared towards actually producing quality broad content for the for these clients that we designed for so yeah i, I mean it's, i think it's it's the concept as a whole is something that's going to be around for a long time and top coder are doing it right yeah i appreciate that that's one of definitely one of my goals is to make sure we're we're doing it right trying to do it right so uh chris or nino any thoughts 
Yeah, sure. So first question. Yes, I am very much interested in going back. <laughs> um, I just have to find the time for it. Um, after I left corporate, I, I, I actually made a promise or a small note to myself that I would do top coder again. But as you know, life happens. And then um, it's my first time to foray into freelance full time. And of course, um, if, if, if you guys have been there, it's, it's so much time, so much work. I think compared to corporate, it's it's much. I, I've I've been working harder. I think it's probably because you don't have that safety net that you have in corporate. Um, if if I don't look for stuff, then uh, of course um I won't be able to survive. So definitely, once I have the time, I will I will go back. And then secondly, I think what was the most favorite thing uh, or part of Top Coder, um I would have to echo also what Dale has mentioned. Um, what I have seen in Top Coder is that they. Um, they really value the stuff that we do. And then I do love the community. Um, I remember before when we have a competition and then we go to the forums, everyone was exchanging ideas, everyone was helping one another. And then once we get to those milestone points, then everyone was giving great feedback. Um, I also remember the time when um, I was also encouraged to give good feedback as well. I was with you, Adam, in 2007. Was it the TCCC, uh, Collegiate Challenge, if I'm not mistaken? And I do remember we were giving out pieces of feedback for the different finalists and it was so tiring um, because uh, I was so inspired by the feedback that was given to me when I was joining and I wanted to give good feedback, um, you know, in return as well. So yep. probably, yeah, it's the community and then the feedback that we get from it. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Nino, any thoughts? For the first question, I think it's also yes, but I don't know when. Uh, all right, now I can do uh, freelance stuff with uh, some other projects and small challenges. Uh, yeah, but my answer is yes. <laughs> and I don't know, we just saw in. And for the second question, yeah, I think uh, uh, what the top coder can help us is like if if you're in top coder you can build your portfolio and if you're doing freelance for other clients other companies then you can show it so uh, it, it means uh, you met uh, standards for some of the large company in the US so I think that that's for me okay uh, we do have some questions for the three of you. So first, uh, Chris, how do you find inspiration um, for, for design? How do you find inspiration? Yeah, so um, mostly uh, I, I love to read. So it's basically reading everything, um, not just uh, design sites. So I, I used to go to a lot of design sites um, of the Zido and, and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, what I what I notice right now is that inspiration can be taken from everything. So I I, I, I read everything that I see, um, even whatever magazines, um, whatever articles, and sometimes um, inspiration bleeds into other um, stuff that I do as well. So I, I do a lot of woodworking right now, a bit of carpentry, a bit of sculpting. So sometimes what you do in those uh, different practices hobbies or media would bleed into um, UI design as well. So I remember if, well, this, this looks great when I was doing this um, physically. So sometimes it would translate well um, when I'm, I'm doing some, uh, you know, screen designs. So yeah, basically everything. <laughs> and then take a lot of walks. So yeah, I was going to ask, clear your mind. I mean, I think I saw, on <laughs> I was going to ask, I think I saw on Facebook, you've been doing some woodworking. So that's great. I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been over the, over the last decade, re, re, like, like read, redoing my house. So that's like my, my, also my inspiration and my outlet, right? So still, that's still cool. using my hands and, and trying to do things like that. Um, awesome. Okay. Hey, uh, Nino. So, you know, I, I, whenever I think of you and I think of your design, I think of great illustration, really crisp, um, visuals, great, um, logo and branding. That's, that's what I come like when I think of you, that's the kind of design that pops in my head. There's a question for you. What's your favorite design domain? Branding, logo, website, mobile? And do you, do you have a reason? What, what, what do you like to do? I think it's definitely, I think it's log, logo design. Uh, it's easy to create logo design. I, uh, I can do it for like uh, one to two hours if 
just a logo design contest. So it 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 won't take me a lot of time to start and think. Yeah, I think yeah, logo design is my main project in top color. And also doing banners. I know Daniela know it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're doing a lot yeah. of banner design. It's like always so great. Like when when I tell him to do a task, it's like very fast and always, always amazing. And he knows what Jesse likes all the time, like sparkles and unicorns. <laughs> so it's, it's great. Thank you for the hard work and the amazing stuff you do. So uh, Dale, after two thousand, after TCO oh nine. One, where'd you go, how'd you go spend the money? <laughs> but uh, the, question, the question is, yeah, how did you celebrate your winning? Uh, so in addition to the winnings that I got from uh, that uh, TCO, um, up until that point, I'd been living with my parents, working in this agency job. So I had no bills. I had all this money saved up. And then the Top Coder winnings was just like the little cherry on top that... It helped me spend a couple of months overseas. So um, I just turned 21 after winning. So I'd always wanted to do it. So I was like, stuff it, I'm gonna do it. Um, spent three months in Europe, did a bus tour, got drunk so many nights. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Cause I couldn't, I couldn't drink, I don't think when I won in Vegas, cause I wasn't 21 yet. So I had to, there was about a month wait, um, even though in Australia we can drink from 18. So it was kind of annoying that I couldn't celebrate it yeah. there, but I definitely did in the following months. That's funny. Hey, uh, so Nino, do you remember how you spent your winnings from TCO um, 8? Uh, yeah. Uh, after winning TCO 8, I actually uh, bought a house because before we were renting an apartment, so I used the money for a down payment for a house and lot. So that's how I spend it. That's awesome. Good, uh, good, <laughs> good kickstart, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do you? Uh, this is a little, little retro ask, but. Uh, any anyone any one of you go first but uh do you remember your first win obviously chris to, chris we talked about your first logo win but do you uh you remember that your first win and kind of what was your reaction to it oh should i go first go right ahead yeah all right so yeah i i would have to go back to that uh 2005 logo win um i honestly was not expecting it uh, I was I was so surprised and 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 so happy. Um, other than the fact that I remember that the prizes were really way high before uh, the first prize <laughs> winning for that, um, but the fact that um, I, I won that contest amongst a lot of entries, so I, I was really happy. And uh, it was a bit tricky because I remember that all the entries were not private. You could actually see the other entries way back in two thousand five, so it was quite exciting. You know. Um, scrolling while waiting for the results seeing oh th this logo is going to beat me this entry is going to beat mine so yeah but when i finally won i, I was yeah, you know over the top <laughs> way up there awesome um nino or dale do you guys remember your first win um i was gonna say the uh, my first win i'm actually scrolling through my email trying to remember it it was for i think a game storyboard yappa um, it's not ringing a huge bell, but I'm sure. Um, so, so it wasn't, wasn't the impact necessarily. Um, it um, so, I mean, I kept coming back. So that was, uh, when right. was that? That was in 09. So checking my email thread of kind of the, the timeline of things, that was when things started. Um, so January 09, and then there's about 50 emails up until February. So I, I definitely became more involved after that. Correct. So, um, so, much, so, so, yeah. So, January of '09 was the Yapper Flash Ward Invaders yeah. game. Yep, and yeah. we ran that as a mini tournament. So that was one of the first times that we started doing this idea of two rounds. So, yeah, something about that interested you, but and you obviously went. And yeah. Won it, so, um, and that that two round thing kind of became the format for a lot of 
uh, most of my what I was when I was involved um, it was always good to get that kind of midpoint feedback of it and as Christopher said sometimes people would come from behind and snatch it from you even when you thought you would you were doing and that was just the a, a, a pro anacon about the the format is that it didn't mean you were necessarily out if you didn't make that that milestone yep it's so funny that flash was the things we were doing huh? oh my god isn't it just crazy <laughs> like how much has it changed <laughs> so one of your other wins was for a geico identity theft protection landing page Does yes that, to ring, that, one ring I, any bells? that one i remember a lot and i did use that um because it was probably one of the first times that was involved with a company that had kind of a, a that i'd actually i'd heard of before Mm -hmm. um, even though we don't have it over here, it's, I still was aware of that brand. Um, so definitely getting that win was exciting. Um, and it, it's been in my portfolio for a little while of something to, you know, in case someone knows about it, it's like, Hey, that did, this is work that I've done for this company. Right. And then there was also, uh, some of the Best Buy, uh, remix stuff. That's right. So, yeah. I remember us was, using your your design to kind of build that site and get that up and running. As the, I, f I feel like there's a little bit of a, of a trajectory during my tenure there that there were more and more of these kind of bigger name brands that were seeing the power of it and becoming involved. Um, and it was really cool to kind of to pitch these con these ideas and concepts to them. So Nino, um, I. You have so many challenges. I had a hard time trying to find the, the like the way back. Like, when was your first one? Because there's it's like 500 challenges, and I have to wait for them all to load. And so, do you remember uh, your first one? Your first win? I can't. I can't remember also. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm guessing. I think uh, logo design. I don't know what company, but third or second place before then since i'm working with james uh, quest uh we're on one team in company i think i treat them for a lunch or something <laughs> that's awesome so hey yeah this is a, this is a, this, is a, this, is a, this is a great yeah. question oh sorry i lost you there for a second yeah okay so a great question uh, from the um, from the attendees. Um, what was kind of you know, at Top Coder and, and, and Studio and Top Coder Design? We have rules. We have rules that we uh, we, we ask everyone to follow. So um, did the three of you ever? I think many people remember the first time they failed screening. So do you guys have an experience of like that that moment of failing screening for you know for for something. So whether it's declarations of stock or fonts or um, failing for, you know, something, you know, being taken from the internet or like. <laughs> That's bringing back a whole um, PTSD of not declaring. It's like, it's like, but I had this, this thing, like, in a real, and that was one of the things about comparing it to the real world. In the real world, you can just go and get these assets and like, it's the, the, the freely available you can modify them to make them your own if you needed to but it was that that strictness was frustrating at times with tco and then you and all it came down to was just writing out a, a texting going i declare that this is this and you're like why can't this do so it was <laughs> yeah it was fun i'll call it <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 you do remember like yeah that was a that, that was a gotcha right I just had a vivid stress flashback there. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris yeah, or, or I, Nino? Yeah, I think I've been through all of that. I think I missed declaring a font. Um, I think I missed declaring an asset. And then I think I also, I remember before it wasn't that structured where we had a submission in different fields. I think we submitted the zip file manually, if I'm not mis mistaken. And then you had to put everything in source. You have to put uh, stuff yeah. in submission. <laughs> and then you had to make a preview file. 
So yeah, you know, sometimes um, when I finish a competition, it's quite late, and you know, like you're hours away from the submission, and everything that's bound to fail will fail. So yeah, I, I apparently put some files in the wrong place, and yeah, I, 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 those <laughs> those are the times I do remember those. <laughs> I think there may have been um, one or two few times where I had to message whoever was moderating or controlling it being like, <laughs> just getting the admin out of the way, being like, <laughs> look, it's, it's done, <laughs> trust me. <it's laughs> so N Nino, how about you? Uh, you know, I, I think I failed a lot of times until now. <laughs> uh, uh, the reason uh, some are using the wrong links from for icons, but before I, I think I remember like before we we're using uh, Photoshop uh, PSD or you, if you want to drag your reference and then you forgot to delete it on the layers, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah, yeah, that's the reason you you failed. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I think one of the um, the biggest times I didn't fail but definitely mismanaged was in a top coder um, contest. I think I read the wrong amount of time we had. I think I had I thought I had an hour more than we actually did, so I was submitted not as best as I could on that particular <laughs> year. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so a question. Um, how do the three of you kind of lack those moments of when you don't have creativity? Like, how do you get, how do you inspire yourself? yourself? So if, if you're for, you know, in a top critter situation, you read a brief, but even with a customer, you're, uh, you know, you're presented with a problem, but you don't, you kind of have a lack of creativity. Do you have an approach? Do you have a, a, a journey that you go on? Dale? Um, yeah, so one of the um, thing, biggest things that I've learned about the way that I work over the years is that I often get stuck at the start, just kind of feeling a bit overwhelmed by the project and like knowing that I want to achieve a certain look or envisaging the final product, but then feeling a bit too anxious about getting there. Um, and I think what I've what I've learned is that just starting and making the mistakes and then polishing the product to get it to where you need to is how I work. And often the creativity comes from that is that through making the mistakes and just putting it on the paper or putting it on the screen first starts, gets those juices flowing. Um, in general, I just find, I like, I, I love scrolling feeds and um, inspiration. Like Instagram is great for that. You follow people and artists, people and artists that you really admire and their work is amazing. And um, you go, well, how do I do that? How do you, how do they achieve that? How can I utilize that sort of concept or that look in, in something, something that I work on? Um, so I think it's stepping away from the project sometimes is the, is the biggest way to get that creativity back. Well, and you kind of said in the beginning, you've been leveraging the internet kind of from the beginning to teach yeah. yourself. So, so that's kind of like just that's that journey of re yeah, research, right? So, yeah, I think I've grown up, we've all kind of grown up in this internet age where we've had all, everything accessible. So there's no reason to be like, there's nothing inspiring me, but it's just, it's go scroll through a, an algorithm suggested feed of artists that you haven't seen before or, Google a random word and then search the hashtags on the um, DeviantArt or some like art sites. Like it's um, it's no excuse, I think, to not have access to to everything. Uh, Chris, yeah. So um, yeah, I think it's the same as Dale. It, I just keep on checking feeds, and it's amazing how we have all these artists right now. So if you check on Instagram, you follow, you check on one, it gives you a couple of suggestions. And then you go to Behance, you have a lot of uh, artists there as well. But one thing that I learned um, as I work and I've done a ton of projects right now. So for example, in logo work, um, I've done more, uh, a couple of dozen clients. So what I do is I actually keep a notebook. Um, I have all these sketches for the logo. And then I also have all the files, even the rejected ones. 
So what I do is that if I have a brief or if I have a client that's simil probably similar to one that I've worked with before, I can go visit those files, visit those sketches, and then place everything in the artboard. So I open up Illustrator or XD or whatever you have there. Um, place everything there because um, from those bits and pieces, you may get something. So one thing that um, a client may have rejected before may work for another client. Of course, it's not blatant, just copy-pasting that thing. But, right. um, you know, um, utilizing those assets or that style, that may, that may work for that new client. So, yeah, that's, that's one tip. Great. Nino? I think uh, it's a similar process. Uh, also look for some reference to inspire me. And uh, sometimes I, I take a break and play a guitar or ride a bike or play with my kids just to get back to and get some creative stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think a lot of times we feel like we need to come up with something that's never been seen before or something that's um, truly original. And a lot of times um, they're not looking to reinvent the whole wheel. It's just your, your, your take on it or that, those small little subtle nuances that, um, that reflect your style. And I think we've all been like, we could always tell who did a certain thing of because of those little subtleties in the design and the, and yes. the aesthetics, um, you could pick like you could pick it a mile away um, sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I think it's um, yeah, learning how to inject y your style into it um, and not trying to break, like reinvent the wheel every time. You know, I, I definitely agree with that. I think me personally, I've, I've that's kind of the journey I've gone on as a designer. Where when I first started, it was like I, I whatever I'm designing needs to be different right but where we're at now just especially in ux it's all about you know it's it's about you know people being familiar right you don't you don't want to throw them a, a curveball on something completely different because then they won't know how to use it right so it's, it's being able to understand how to do that um and then to your to what you said dale like yeah i mean obviously i've been doing this for a long time with all of you so i i definitely know uh, many of your um I can spot some of your designs. So if it, you know, when you guys submit, everyone has a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, flair or talent, you know, whatever that's, yeah, tell that is like, okay, I think this is now sometimes, um, you know, I am wrong, but it is kind of cool to, to find that out. So. Sometimes uh, there, I think there's a few times where I'd be like, how can I be more like this user? And what, what is it about their design? Cause you see, you know, if they win a couple of times, it's like, what is it about what they're supplying and how can you take that on board? It's, it's kind of a form of plagiarism, but it's, it's utilizing what they've found is the recipe for some of their success mm -hmm. um, into what you do or how can, what, what's your take on that recipe to get yep. there. So we are, we're coming up on, on an hour. I have one last question here. Um, and this is, I, I, I personally have a kind of an issue using this word, but how do you guys feel about being called alumni? So, you know, like, uh, what's, uh, think, what's your take on that? I think Danielle said dinosaurs before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, remember prefer that. Alum, I prefer alumni. <laughs> <laughs> relics. It, we're we're relics of Top Coda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like it's it's like it's like you didn't really graduate. You just kind of you're taking a, a journey in your, your career journey right now, but the way I look at yeah. it is like everyone has their career journeys, but at least Top Coder is still here. So Yeah, and being being called alumni, um, is kind of heartwarming because I don't think it's um, I, I, I always want to be associated with Top Coder because it's um, the, the, the platform and the concept of it is is great so it's it's something that I would happily recommend to anyone um, with the caveat being um, you have the choice of how much you inject yourself into it and that's kind of the great thing about it is that you can pick and choose what you work on, how much time you invest in it. Um, and there's gonna be pros and cons to how much you reap of the rewards for that. Um, 
I just this question just came to my mind. Um, if you guys have a couple more minutes, but um, Dale, I noticed on on your website you prominently display your championship. Um, when you when you guys talk to customers, hey, look at that. There you when go. you guys talk to there's your, there's your trophy. When you guys talk to customers or like doing freelance or you're going for a job, how much do you talk about your top tier experience? How um, much do you share? Of, yeah, it's one of those things where. Um, I'd be like, I went to Vegas to compete in a design competition. And that's not something that is on a lot. A lot of people can say that, there, you know, at that time, there was only 10 people that were in that main kind of pool. So like to have that opportunity to go do that. And just when you say it out loud, it kind of sounds crazy. Um, there's not many jobs or avenues that, that have that to go do that. And that was in addition to like the opportunity and money you can earn from just doing the regular stuff. So it was, yeah, it's where I, I definitely bring it up a lot as this amazing kind of little bubble and chapter in, in my career. Chris, how about you? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably the same as, um, as Dale. So it's, it's actually very prominently displayed in the CVs that I send out as well. Um, if clients ask for it, it's, it's highlighted on top. It's a one pager, but top coder has a very prominent place on top. Uh, yeah, it's not every day that you can talk about that. Um, even if it's not uh, first place, uh, I've competed and placed in a, a lot of contests in top coder. And it's, it's more, it's in an international level nonetheless. So um, given that scale, it's, 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 it makes me feel proud. And to answer Daniela's question earlier, or the, the question about being an alumni earlier, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm very proud to be an alumni of Top Coder. <laughs> nice. Uh, Nino, how, how much do you leverage or use the use Top Coder in your resume or talking with potential customers? Yeah, same with uh, Chris. Uh, it's also in. It's also in my resume and I put the, all the accomplishment, TCO attendance, uh, everything is there. And yeah, the, the portfolios, I use some of it, uh, showing it to some clients. Yeah. It's great. And I'm, and I'm sure they all ask you if you're really good coders, right? <laughs> <laughs> You got a top coder <laughs> championship. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, we okay, make it hey, look pretty. Um, we don't make it work. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, I, I appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you for joining our alumni panel. It was great to see all of you. Um, you know, let's let's do stay in, stay in touch. And um, I, I hope all of you stay healthy and safe in, in all this craziness. So, yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay. everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.